I'll use it for self-defense. just kill a man forgive me father welcome to the first of my halloween themed reviews this year the spooky season this year hasn't quite felt very spooky to me everyone seems to be very low profile this time around i don't know maybe it's just a stressful year or something totally can't see why it would be stressful at all regardless i've taken it upon myself to try and get some of that spooky spirit out into the world by reviewing some more horror themed games not necessarily overt horror games, mind you, I just personally don't take to the genre very well, but I do find it interesting when other types of games use a horror aesthetic. And the two games I've got lined up to review at the moment both touch on my favorite aesthetic, Lovecraftian horror. So, sit back, relax, turn off the lights, and let's get to it. This is Forgive Me, Father. Forgive Me Father, or FMF as I'm just going to call it, uses an interesting kind of art style. It's a boomer shooter akin to the original Doom games that uses a 2D, cel-shaded comic book kind of art direction. That 2D part is important since, despite the environments being 3D, all the objects and characters in it are 2D sprites that turn around to face you no matter what direction you're facing them. Which makes everything look like these spooky cardboard cutouts. It's remarkably faithful to the way old-school shooters like Doom function since they were technically just 2D games played at a weird camera angle, while also modernizing and changing things enough to still look unique and interesting. Because of this, a lot more effort can be put into character design, giving each enemy and boss more expression and life, even if it's just a zombie or a walking pile of tentacles. It also makes the bosses look really good and imposing since they're always looking at you no matter where you go. As far as the sound goes, the sound effects are really nice. Each weapon has a good firing sound to it, and the enemies react rather dramatically, especially the liquidators. The music is nice and intense, even if the combat music lingers for a little too long, and the voice acting is surprisingly well done. It all feels very audio drama-esque, and I just like that. You hear a metallic sound coming from one of the coolers. It's Dr. Sullivan, hiding from the world. He recognizes your face. He slowly comes back to his senses. He gives you a key with the image of Cthulhu. You will open the gates of darkness with it. He directs you to the hills outside the city. That's where they took everyone. Your cousin is there. They're in great danger. Suddenly, Something attacks Dr. Sullivan. He's dying in convulsions before your eyes. What is the fate of Lewis? You must hurry. And the story is precisely why I like the audio drama style of voice acting here. The story itself is nothing new or groundbreaking, especially by Lovecraftian horror standards. You play as either a priest or a journalist who has made their way to a small town on the coast of Maine where something mysterious has been going down. Once you get there, you quickly realize something has gone horribly wrong as you're getting attacked by zombies and monsters with various kinds of tentacles on them. Yeah, not exactly a surprise in this kind of genre. It's revealed that, shocker, a cult surrounding Cthulhu has taken complete control over the town and now they're trying to summon the Dark Deity to end the world just as any Cthulhu cult does. 
Your character gets their hands on a key needed to summon the big guy, and now you're the sole target for the entire town, forcing you to fight through hordes of zombies, cultists, fish people, and various other large monsters to still stay alive, and stop the threat of Cthulhu from consuming the town and the world. Again, it's a pretty cookie-cutter Lovecraft plot. Really, like the most basic kind of Lovecraft plot you can possibly think of. But the presentation of the story and the voice acting just makes it way better. And now for the meat, the gameplay. As mentioned before, you can choose to play as either a priest or a journalist. Both are unnamed, but I went priest for my playthrough. The main difference between them is that the priest is more defensive and slower paced, whereas the journalist is more offensive, but as far as I can tell, you can still play however you like with either. Now, this is a boomer shooter, which means you get a nice variety of weapons to choose from, including a pistol, machine gun, submachine gun, grenade launcher, Tesla gun, harpoon gun, and a few others along with various abilities like a cross to heal you or a Necronomicon to turn invincible. And these abilities function off of the madness system that's in the game, because of course there's a madness system, it's a Lovecraft game. The way madness works in this game is that it's essentially this meter that fills as you either take damage or deal damage. The more your madness fills up, the more your screen gets all black and white and stuff, and the more damage you're able to deal while also taking less damage overall. At the same time though, if you want to use your abilities, that uses up your madness points. So you're effectively exchanging straight up stat upgrades temporarily for some sort of bonus from your abilities. Now the roster of weapons itself isn't really anything special, but they make up for it through an upgrade system. There is leveling in this game, and each level gives you a point to use to upgrade your stats, abilities, or weapons. And upgrading the weapons is where things get interesting. You could choose to simply give your gun a straight stat upgrade, like what I did with my SMG, or you can instead effectively create a new gun out of it entirely, like how I turned my burst fire machine gun into a weird goo grenade launcher weapon. You can essentially choose whether you want efficiency or variety in your loadout, and uh, personally I think a balance of both is best. The key thing here is that I found myself swapping between various weapons fairly regularly. Each one has their strengths and weaknesses, and ammo is scarce enough that you need to know each one and can't just abandon certain guns for others since you'll eventually run out of bullets. Enemies are in a similar boat. Some are just stronger variations of other enemies, but the game is consistently introducing new enemies and gimmicks at you to keep things from getting boring. All in all, some solid boomer shooter gameplay for someone that just wants to chill and do some run and gun with maybe the occasional vague colored key puzzle. And that is FMF. I got this game from, I think, a Humble Bundle or Humble Choice thing a while back, but I hadn't actually tried it until now. Well, good thing I did, because this game fits pretty well into a spooky season, doesn't it? Either way, I'd give FMF a pretty solid recommendation. It's a nice little boomer shooter that I think could use some more attention. This has been The Ratman, and I will see you all later.